Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 91. My name is Jason Erpling. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC. I'm here with Scott Ferrioli. I'm the owner of DVC-Rental.com and BuyAndSellDVC.com. And today is November 2nd, 2022. So I don't know if officially Jersey Week has started, but... It's, it's right around that it's time. It's right I'm around sure the exact right. date. It's, it's, it's here. <laughs> And uh, for those that don't know Jersey Week, and again, I'm not an expert, but I believe that there's schools are closed and a lot of people from New Jersey come down to Walt Disney World. And those that, you know, not from New Jersey that check reservations far in advance around that time in November, they'll see dates available before Jersey Week starts. They'll see dates available after Jersey Week ends. And they'll say, why can't I get any of these dates? And I see it every single yep. year. They're like, what, what's going on? What's going on? What's, what's going, going on the first week of November? Yeah, it's Jersey week, which yeah, they, they have teacher prep days. So the teachers have often a couple like half days, I think as well. So a lot of families say, great time to come down to Florida. And Disney also always combines it with a marathon time as well. Oh, really? So you've got a marathon and you've got Jersey week overlapping each other just to make it really hard to get reservations. And over the past couple months, we've been getting in a bunch of confirmed reservations on our deals page, and then within a day, they they disappear every single time just because people need those dates and there's nothing available. I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like, the, I mean, since I, I feel like at Jersey Week, I don't know if it's been going on for, you know, 30 plus years, whatever. I gotta tell you, we lived in New Jersey, we never came down for Jersey Week. Oh, really? <laughs> no. But it's always been a thing? I, I, to I, my knowledge, I, okay. I, at least for the last, um, 15 years, I think it's been a thing. But again, we lived in New Jersey. I never came down during Jersey Week, but I've heard of Jersey Week, and it's it is definitely a thing. That's again, being from somebody who's from New York and New Jersey, you'll notice there's a lot more northern accents down here <laughs> that week of the year. There's a lot more of my my peoples. <laughs> and so, just uh, so the 11 month window is going to be October 2nd, 2023, and then. Uh, uh, the seven month window is already into a, a summer of 2023, June 2nd, 2023. Oh, wow. You got to start, so. start playing those vacations immediately. <laughs> and uh, we're going to start on the buy and sell side of things. And, you know, we get a lot of people that uh, are already owners, own at a, you know, one resort. And then <clears throat> now they're looking to, <clears throat> excuse me, purchase into uh, a second resort. And so their questions are, what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? I already own 200 points at Saratoga Springs. Why should I buy at a different resort? Well, so first of all, if you buy the same resort, then all of your points are gonna have the same annual dues. All of your points are gonna have the same expiration date. All of your points, if you wanna make a reservation 11 months in advance, they can all be used together. So, uh, you know, everything is basically the same thing. Now, if you buy a different resort, now, this is the one question that unfortunately people you know, don't like the answer to, but it's just the way it is, because they have the thing where if I own 200 points at Saratoga <laughs> and now I buy 150 at Beach Club. Can they use them all at Beach Club at the 11 month window? That is it right <laughs> there. Every single time they ask that question, can I use all the points together at 11 months? And you cannot. It doesn't matter if you buy resale or direct. The rules of the program do not change no matter how many points that you own. So It, it makes sense because you figure, yeah. picture a small resort like Beach Club or Grand Californian and you own a thousand points at Saratoga Springs or any, anywhere else and then you buy a 25 point Grand Californian contract. Really would be fair if you sit there and say, I'll take all my thousand and twenty five points and use them all to, t to grab, you know, 11 month window reservations at Grand Californian. There's, it's a small resort. They can't have all those extra points taking up inventory that Grand Californian owners are supposed to have. So it, 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 I hate to say it, but it, it makes sense. Oh yeah. I mean, it hundred percent makes sense. Yeah. That way it would just, it would just, it would really almost make almost the entire program yeah. not work. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and then advantages are, you know, if you want two home resorts, you know, if you say, okay, we want to stay at Boulder Ridge every other year, we want to make that reservation 10 months in advance. We'll do it with these points. I want to stay at Boardwalk 10 months in advance. You can do it with these points. Um, 
So, I mean, and then... That's what, that's what we did. You know, we, we started out at Saratoga Springs because we felt, and I, st I still feel this way, Saratoga Springs has the best bang for the buck on property. And then I wanted more points. So I bought Saratoga Springs again. And I was using them. I'll be honest with you. I own the majority of our points at Saratoga Springs. I've stayed at Saratoga Springs once. And beautiful resort. I just like others better. And by staying at the other resorts, I said, wow, I really like Animal Kingdom. And I really like Boardwalk. So... I went out and I bought Animal Kingdom points, so that way I'm able to get Animal Kingdom rooms at 11 months. I bought some smaller amounts of Boardwalk points, so that way I can get the Boardwalk tougher to get reservations at 11 months as well. So I, I, we always try to be as thrifty with our points as possible, so you know, I wanted to be able to stay in the, when I can, the Value View Studio at Animal Kingdom, which is impossible to get if you don't own there. And I wanted to stay in the Standard View Studio at Boardwalk, because they're much less points and a, a great bang for the buck. And if you don't own at those resorts, you're not getting that at seven months. You might be able to still, you'll, be, you'll still be able to get into Animal Kingdom and you, a lot of times you'll be able to get into Boardwalk, but you're, you're being the higher priced rooms. So that's exactly what we did. We owned at Saratoga Springs and then we added on it. I said, I like these resorts and I periodically added on at those resorts so I could get the 11 month window specifically for those resorts. And really he's touching on a very good point there because you buy in and you start using it that's really kind of kind of direct you on where you if you decide you want to buy more points where you might buy more points if you like you, like you said let's say you own at Saratoga you're making all your reservations less than seven months and you're fine that you're getting into certain places at certain times will you say well I you know there's I don't, I don't need to buy more points at this resort because we're able to do what we want with the points we have but if you say oh we really like this resort but we're having a hard time getting in you know, then that's when you want to say, okay, let's go ahead and purchase this resort because it's going to fill the need that we have to stay there at this time and it's going to give us that 7 to 11 month window. So that's where using the rep membership is really going to help guide you into that possible, you know, add-on purchase or that second resort uh, purchase for yourselves. So uh, hopefully that helps answer some of your questions about buying uh, a second resort or additional points. I'll, I'll just add on that there are differences if you get like a different use here and stuff like that. And again, this is all stuff that you'd want to talk to Jason about because again, Jason knows everything about DVC. So just something to keep in mind, you know, there are other intricacies that you possibly have to, pot to worry about. Jason's your guy. So if you've got any questions, you're thinking of adding a different resort, something's a different use here. Jason can answer. I won't go into all the details. Well, now. it's kind of like an accountability issue. It's like you're going to have, like, for example, two different banking windows. So some people, that's going to stress them out, and some people, you know, they don't have an issue with that. So the, that's the, just the, the, an the, example the, there. Yeah, that's one of the main things, combining the points together, if you can use them at the seven-month window, which can be done, there's an extra step with possibly transferring. I, I own at a bunch of different resorts, and I have several different use years. I would not encourage anybody to do that. I do it for the business. Um, it's also beneficial if you're transferring in points, you've got multiple different membership numbers, so you can do different amount of transfers per year. So there are lots of differences about it. And again, that's something that's not going to be easy to find online, but that's something where an experienced guy like Jason can very easily help you with. And now we're going to move on to the food review of the week. Ty, do the magic thing. Come here, I'm going to eat you. Get in my belly. So again, here's where my best experience comes in. Unfortunately, it's eating. We are back at Rick Sports Bar Grill at Coronado Springs. I talked about it two weeks ago. And again, that's where we had the wachos. Those were the, the, the seasoned um, waffle fries, like nachos covered in cheese and bacon and deliciousness. This time, we're going, again, this is the same exact day, but this is the Reuben sandwich. Basic Reuben sandwich, corned beef, sauerkraut, Swiss cheese, Thousand Island dressing on marble rye, $18. Bid on the expensive side. If you have an annual pass or you have DVC, again, places like this do give you a discount. This was a very, very solid Reuben. It had lots of cheese, thick corned beef. I mean, it was probably one of the better corned beef sandwiches I've had on Disney property. Um, I would give the sandwich itself an 8.3, very, very solid. We'll definitely get it again. We had this conversation, Jason, a couple weeks ago. It, might, it, might month, it was probably a month or more, actually. Sweet potato fries, where do you stand on them? Do you yes. like it? 
We had the option to get the sweet potato fries here, the crinkle cut sweet potato fries, which I love. And these are gonna get their own review on here today because these were the worst sweet potato fries I have ever oh, had. Oh no, that's not good. They had zero flavor. The sandwich gets an 8.3. The fries get a whopping 1.5. Terrible, terrible fries. But I was able to take these fries and I still had some extra cheese left over on that Wacho's plate. And I was dipping the fries in the cheese. That helped save it a little bit. There you go. But again, fries were not good. Reuben sandwich was really good. Again, on the expensive side, but really, really like Rick's Sports Bar. Great option for a local or if you're down here because they almost always have availability. Last minute availability, you wanna go for lunch. You know, it's, it's 1140, you can look and odds are they've got dining at 12 o'clock. I mean, or when we, when we went that day, you know, maybe it's like, oh, there was a dining available at like, I'm making this up, 12 and 12.45. She's like, oh, they only got those two spots. We went there, I think there was like two other people in the restaurant. I mean, there, it was, a, you could very easily, easily have walked in and, and I watched people walk in and just get a table. Lots of options. I think it's just one of those not well-known places. Doesn't have a huge menu. Again, more like a sports bar. But again, not a bad place, easy to get into. So add this to your list. It's, it's, I think this is my place. favorite sandwich that you've done so far. The Reuben? I think so. Oh. I, I, I do like Rubens. I, I will add that if you're a huge sauerkraut fan, this root, again, this is I'm sure based on who makes it as well. There wasn't a lot of sauerkraut on there, which I didn't mind. I, I like sauerkraut, but sometimes it can be a little overpowering on there. So it was a lighter amount of sauerkraut, and, but like a nice thick corned beef sandwich. I mean, $18 is expensive for it, but it's Disney, so you deal with it. But again, really liked it. And again, after we're done with this place, walk around a little bit, as I was saying, they had a really, really nice lobby and a really nice, um, like a marketplace in there as well. With it, again, selling you basic market stuff, but then like some of the stuff like they have at Disney Springs, like in the, in the co-op there where they've got like special Disney themed plates and um, like kitchen wares and stuff like that. At per, I mean, like expensive, the Dunienberg purses, like they had a large selection of stuff. It was a really big store and I was, I was quite impressed with it. So if, you've, if you're eating at Rick's Sports Bar, Definitely walk around, check out the little marketplace area too. A lot of fun. So it, so I have to ask, you know, Jersey Week, corned beef. Have you been to Carnegie Deli in the past? I have not been to Carnegie Deli. Oh my gosh. That's cool. I think it closed in the pandemic. No, or is it? It, I don't know. I don't know. No Cat's Deli, no Carnegie Deli. Oh my gosh. I've been to I, I have to try out the one The one down here that I keep hearing is fantastic is 2J's. I haven't been there. You have, have, you, have you heard of 2J's though or no? Mm. It, it's, it, it's, a, it's a chain at least. I know there's multiple 2J's. There's... There's one in Orlando, and there's, I know there's one um, at least down by like Hope Sound area. So there's multiple 2Js. I've heard very much New York style, you know, the pastrami, corned beef, big sandwiches, and, and quality. I've been to Carnegie Deli. It's been yeah. years, but... Uh, Is it delicious? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I love yeah. it. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to the dbc rental side of things, and it looks like Scott's getting a little wild today. I'm having a little fun here, and I'm sure I'm gonna upset a ton of people because I'm going through the, the DVC lobby comparisons, ranking the worst lobbies to the best lobbies. And there's no way to possibly disagree with anything on this list because this is the ultimate list. You can't possibly have a different opinion. So we're gonna start with the worst. We don't have all the resorts on here, right? I've got, this is just Walt Disney. Okay, Morgan. perfect. So not, no okay. Hilton Head, no Grand California, Nalani, all that stuff. Just the Walt Disney World resorts, DVC resorts, and there's there's really two tiers. Like there's the bottom, and then there's the cream of the crop is just so far ahead of the rest. It's it's not close. The bottom one is is Bay Lake Tower. It's a very very small lobby, and there's there's nothing going on in there. You know, you you walk in. I'm not going to do too much of an explanation of each one, but Bay Lake Tower, you walk in, the desk is in front of you, and if you go right, it goes down to rooms, and you go left, you go down to rooms and elevators, and that's basically it. There's nothing else there. There's no food. There's no, there's no anything. That's a very good description. Oh, thank you. Next, I'll, I'll, I'll group the next two together, Saratoga Springs and Old Key West. Both of those are resorts that are condo style where, you know, you could like drive to the different areas and then park outside your room. So this is just like the, the main area where you go and check in. They're just a small little, big, bigger than, bigger than Bay Lake Tower, but small little area where they just, 
I, 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 think, I think old Key West is a little bit better. At Old Key West, when you walk in, you've got the people in front of you. And then on the left-hand side, um, there's a little like seating area. I think they have a TV going. And they've got books. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beachy look. And it, it, it's, it's nice, but it's not super impressive. Saratoga Springs, very, very similar. The same walk-in, just the little people there in front of you. A large amount. You could have like eight different people waiting to check you in. But there's nothing else really going on. You, at least with places like this, you can walk down the hall and you, there's different restaurants and stuff along the way at Saratoga Springs. And at, at Old Key West, if you walk right outside the lobby, right there is Olivia's restaurant. So there's stuff going on there. With Bay Lake Tower, there's literally nothing. I think at Saratoga, you have to at least acknowledge the, the jockey on the horse outside. The there, 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 there is a statue of a jockey on the horse outside the lobby that's... Quite exciting. It quite, is. It's quite exciting. I mean, it's, it's trademark. <laughs> Next on my list, and this has a clarification, is Grand Floridian Villas. Not the main Grand Floridian, because the Grand Floridian lobby would be towards the top of this list. But this is just the, the villas section. So when you go in, they've got little desks where, instead of like a, a regular um, check-in where there's there's a big, you know, desk and there's eight people standing behind it. You walk to each person. This one, each person sits at a little desk like you're at school and they sit on one side and you sit there like you're in like the teacher's office and you're worried I'm going to get yelled at every time I go to check in. And when you, once you're done checking in, they do have a little like lobby area and they do have a nice little fountain, a Mary Pop Poppins fountain with the little penguins playing in the water. So not, not a bad lobby. It's just nothing near the top. <laughs> Next up is, and again, you, nobody can argue with these. These, this is it. This is this is the list. Next up is Disney's Riviera, beautiful, beautiful resort, but their lobby is just anticlimactic. It's a huge resort. It's just kind. It's just kind of plain. There's not a lot of decor. It's smaller ceilings. There is a little um, like coffee and like cookie shop, like right bakery shop, like right off to the side. So. I like that because they've got little treats and some like snacks on the side. But again, nothing too great. I, I, I feel now it starts getting a little bit better. Where I, I'm going to combine the next two. I've got Beach Club and then Boardwalk a little above Beach Club. A little bit bigger open air lobbies, some more theming. Um, Beach Club, this is where you start getting some nice bigger chandeliers. Both Beach Club and Boardwalk have nice, again, big chandeliers, and you've got some little statue, you've got some statues. Boardwalks has a little carousel that goes around. It also has, it's known for its creepy chairs by the fireplace. There, there, that's getting a little better. Next up, we're getting, getting better, and the reason I'm doing this is because I stayed at Kadani Village a couple weeks ago for a night, and we walked down the long, long hallways to Kadani to, to go to the lobby, and I'm used to staying at Jumbo. I've stayed at Kadani, I think it's my, my third time. So I, I've been there a bunch. And I know what to expect when I go to Kadani. But I walk down there, and it's just, it, it's, again, it, it's, it's high up this list, but it's not Jumbo House. And it is, it, it's, it's a very nice lobby, decently open. They've got some, some cool um, like decorations up, African themed, nice lobby. It was super, when we went there the other day, there was probably, it doesn't sound like a lot of people, because if you're thinking of like a large lobby, there was probably 20 people in there, and it felt like it was wall-to-wall -wall people. Oh, really? It was, yes, it just, I was like, it felt so much busier than Jumbo House, and I'm sure you know, Jumbo can accommodate more, but it just, it, it felt busy, it felt like everybody was on top of us, I was like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't like this. But big, again, nicer lobby, but not, Towards, I mean, this is this is the fourth down, so this is the fourth best one, and it, it's not differentiating itself too much yet. It, it, it's it's I, it's definitely better than Boardwalk and Beach Club, but nice lobby. Next up is where we start getting a step up. That's Polynesian. Polynesian lobby, absolutely beautiful. Multiple levels. You've got several restaurants. You've got lots of shopping down there. You, again, they've made changes over the years with the decor. A lot of people don't like it with removing the fountain and such. I know Ty is not a good, fa not a huge fan of it. He's a huge Poly fan. Not a big fan of the new lobby at Polynesian, but still very nice lobby. Now for the next ones, I have a 1A and a 1B. 
because it's, it's hard to differentiate between the two. They were both done by the same exact architect, so they're big, both open air lobbies, you know, all the way up, like you know, six stories up, beautiful lobbies, but 1B, I have Animal Kingdom Jumbo House, which I absolutely love the lobby. Again, this is probably, it feels like four or five times the size of Kadani Village. You walk in there and it's impressive. And I think a lot of, some of it's also, it holds a place in my heart. It's one of the first places I stayed when I became a DVC member. And I walked in and I was like, I can't believe I'm staying in a place like this. I mean, it, it just, you, when you walk into the lobby, you feel like you're somewhere special. You know, you feel, and it, it's African themed and it's got thatched roof and everything. It's got big pillars holding up like wood carvings. I mean, it, it's, you feel like you're somewhere special, not even on Disney property. You are somewhere, you're in Africa. This is an African lodge and it's huge and impressive. And again, that's 1B. 1A, and I'm combining them here, Wilderness Lodge. So it's, it's, it's your Boulder Ridge and your Copper Creek. Again, Pacific Northwest themed. And again, Animal Kingdom has great restaurants right there. And they've got a little fire, a little like fire pit area where you can sit and talk. Wilderness Lodge has a big, big fireplace with 10 plus rockers outside. You know, so you can sit there and hang out. And you've got Whispering Canyon with people hooting and hollering and having fun. And it's just, you're in the Pacific Northwest. It's big wood carvings and again, floor to ceiling at Christmas time. Again, both Animal Kingdom Jumbo, at Jumbo House and Willis Lodge, huge, you know, five story trees are up. Absolutely gorgeous. So it definitely yeah. takes you to a whole nother. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you, when, you know, if you walk into a Marriott, you know, you're like, okay, this is great. You know, when you walk into Animal, Jumbo House or Wilderness Lodge, your, your jaw drops. I mean, even as somebody who's been there 20 times, I walk in and I'm just like, this place is amazing. I mean, I, they're absolutely, at Jumbo House and Willis Lodge, again, 1A, 1B, I, I could switch them around a little bit. I've got to give it a little bit to Wilderness Lodge. Plus also, Wilderness Lodge has a river that is starts in the lobby and then goes down outside. <laughs> I mean, it, it, how do you compete with places like that? And those are by far Jumbo House and Willis Lodge, best lobbies on property. Doesn't mean the other ones stink, but they do. Yeah, I mean, in comparison, I mean, definitely, if you're comparing Wilderness Lodge lobby to Bay Lake Tower lobby, yeah, it's night and day. Yeah, I mean, you, you can literally take Bay Lake Tower's lobby and, and probably fit, I mean, just space, just on the ground, forget that it's stick, six stories up, but you could fit six, eight of them inside of Jumbo House or Wilderness Lodge. And then you, instead of having, you know, a, a 15 foot ceiling, this thing is whatever, I don't know, 70 feet up, 60 feet up, just absolutely amazing and impressive. And it, it, again, it's, uh, it's one of those things that I loved about being a DVC member is that like, I personally, I would not have been able to afford to stay at places like this without DVC. And I don't want to spend, you know, 500, $800 a night to stay at these places, but becoming a DVC member is one of the best things I've ever done. And it allows me to stay in these places where I walk in and I'm like, this is amazing. And again, I've, I've been to these places dozens of times and I still walk in and I'm like, you know, I, I walk in to Saratoga Springs, Old Key, but anywhere else, I'm like, no, it's cool, I'm happy, I'm happy to be here, it's a great place. I walk in here, I'm just like, wow. Every time, I, it just, it's absolutely amazing. And I, I just smile to myself going, I, I did this, I can't believe I, I got in here. So that's the list. Tell me, go. I, I know I told you that this is the definitive list and you can't possibly argue with me. Comment section, let me know what you think I really messed up. What, what, what do you like or what do you hate? You, know, what, you, know, you might sit there and hate Jumbo House. We, we had a friend of ours previously that she loved Kadani Village. She thought it was like nice and cozy and hated Jumbo House because she said she felt like it was Grand Central Station. It was too, too big and too busy where I thought, I think it's super impressive. So in the comment section, I hope we get a bunch of comments on this one because there's a lot of stuff to go over. Tell us what your favorite lobby is. Tell us where you think I messed up. Tell us, you know, what you if one of these you think is garbage that I really liked or vice versa. Let us know. Again, we love seeing this stuff. We love the interaction. I'm just not sure that I would put Beach Club ahead of Riviera. You're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't think you put Beach ahead of Riviera? Um. Again, I, it's 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 a, it's a tough. It's a tough one. I, but I haven't checked, but I haven't, I mean, Beach Club to me, it just, I haven't been in there in a while, so, but it's, it wasn't anything too. Uh, that, that, that's the thing. I, I feel a lot of these, like, 
Bay Lake Tower, Saratoga, Old Key West are kind of like by themselves. It gets be- it gets a little better with Grand Floridian. R- Riviera Beach Club and Boardwalk are all very similar. They're they're they're, they're nice. Okay. On the Riviera, I'm including the outside too, with the water and okay. You know, sorry, I you know I threw the the jockey and the horse in there at Saratoga too, so <laughs> I'm sneaking outside. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're throwing so. these little extra things, but again, <laughs> these these can be switched around. Again, I, I find these to be in a, they're separate, different tiers. I, I think Jumbo House and Wilder's Lodge are just in a tier of their own. Polynesian's close. They've got a great lobby too, but I just, I really love the design of Wilderness Lodge and Yeah, and I mean, Jumbo. I don't I think, think they're I, by themselves. I don't see how anyone can argue with you on number one, so. Yeah, but, but the, po- Polynesian's, again, very solid. And again, I, people could possibly make a, a play and say Polynesian's the best one. I think you're wrong. <laughs> but it's a beautiful, Polynesian, Beautiful lobby. I, I think by far Polynesian Animal Kingdom and Wilderness Lodge are your three best, and it's it's kind of hard to argue that. The only thing is, again, if you're if you're counting Grand Floridian, the main lobby, not not the one in the villa section, because the main lobby at Grand Floridian is is amazing as well. I, I'd put that above Polynesian, and that's up there with John One Wilderness Lodge. It, maybe it could replace some. You know, we're, we're, it's that time of the year. We're, we're coming up that Christmas time. Those three, those three resorts, Grand Floridian Main Lobby, Jumbo House, and Wilder's Lodge are a site in their own to go visit. Fantastic. I was going to say, because people do the lobby hopping. Oh, yeah. And really, those three. I mean, you know, they'll, they'll sw- they might swing by the other ones just to kind of like see them because, you know, they, they want to I don't like, think anyone's swinging by Bay Lake Tower. It's, well, Bay Lake Tower is tough to get into. Maybe if they're doing a little monorail spin. Maybe. But, I mean, the three ones, if you're, this, Christmas is coming. If you want to check out the lobbies, Grand Floridian, Jumbo House and Wilderness Lodge, you won't be disappointed. Giant trees, stuff going on, absolutely gorgeous. That's a good no ten on, I think. Man, I want to go there. <laughs> I really want to go. Thanks for watching. They're not decorated yet. They're not decorated just yet, but in the, in the next probably two to three weeks, the resorts will be decorated. So be sure to come back next week. Check us out again. Be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. We appreciate you all. Thank you so much.